Today's May 27th. Happy Memorial Day. Get the food on the grill, the ball gloves out. Invite some friends and family over. Have a great day. Let's talk baseball. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Let's go. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh and I'm joined as always by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? What's going on, man? Not too much. It is... Is it like like the beginning of summer? You know what I mean? <laughs> is that what it kind of feels like? Yeah. yeah. It's Memorial Day. Dynamite drop in, Monty. <laughs> right? Like, it's like, you know, you, you think about it, it's like, it's Memorial Day and let's get ready for some ball. But yeah, that's yeah. not going to get to happen for a pirate fan. Yeah. Um, maybe you're stuck at work. Uh, maybe you're prepping the grill. Uh, thanks for tuning into the podcast today. Uh, we're We're very thankful to be a small part of your day. Here on Memorial Day, if you're listening later in the week, that's awesome too. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're actually <laughs> just for you know transparency right out of the gate. Uh, we're recording this episode the Wednesday before the Brave series, um, but we have some really interesting things to talk about uh, today. One being mostly Memorial Day. Uh, we're going to get into some news that could that could impact the Pirates' future and. What we currently know uh, as the state of things as far as like TV deals and things like that. Um, we're also going to preview the Tiger series uh, that's that's coming up. And so a lot to get into. So uh, I guess I guess it's probably fair to say like, you know, the reason for this is me and my family are going on vacation. And so we I won't be back until late Monday night. Um, so we talked. I mean, we talked a couple times like how are we going to do this what yeah. are we going to do uh it wasn't it's camping it's like it's i say camping but like we got we're in a we're in like a cabin thing <laughs> on like a campground there could be internet there <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's certainly not like i'm not roughing it <laughs> right but i i don't know what the internet's like i don't want to take a bunch of gear i want to enjoy my vacation and not have to worry about taken yeah. and having a setup and all that stuff. So, so anyway, it's Memorial Day for us right now. We're going to travel in time and and you guys for you guys, you know, hopefully you are actually listening on Memorial Day. And you know, Memorial Day to me, uh we're just going to cut right into this because I think that this is really the kind of the meat and potatoes of of everything that, you know, we wanted to talk about today. Uh, to me, Memorial Day is a baseball holiday. Yeah. I mean, uh, le let me backtrack. Uh, obviously, there's a real reason for, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's Memorial yeah. Day and, and it is, uh, you know, it's very important um, in that sense. You know what I'm saying? Like our dad served all, you know, all the things. Uh, ultimately, I, I don't want to say that it's a baseball thing in the way that right. I did, right? It came off the wrong way. But it's to me it's an important date on the baseball calendar. You know, everybody right. I, I I've I'm still saying it. Every time we're talking about all these different things and I'm saying, well, this early in the season, this early in the season, this early in the season. And I had a, a buddy of mine say, hey man, it's not early in the season anymore. And I'm like, yeah, it still is. And this date kind of marks that for me. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Fair. And I, so like, but like Memorial Day, it's usually a day game. You have the festivities. You have like the, uh, I think that baseball does a really good job with, um, with like the, the reverence of these, these types of holidays. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you have, you have all of the things that they're going to celebrate. They're going to take the time. You're going to actually, you know. Well, they're doing the, uh, the, the moment of silence across, you know, league wide. 
Yeah. I think it's like 3 p.m. if you're doing they're doing the pregame activities for a later game or you're in the middle of a game, but everything's stopping at 3 p.m. local time. And they're doing a moment of silence for you know what Memorial Day is. It's is it local time or are they those, doing like three? They're Eastern doing local and, time. Okay, local. So it yeah, will actually. I was be, reading the post. It's uh, three p.m. local time. Okay. So wherever, whatever time zone you're in, it's going to be three o'clock. Yeah, and, read that. Do you, you know, have the post right there? Major League Baseball honors Memorial Day by participating in the National Moment of Remembrance a nationwide effort to remember those who have died while serving the country. During the moment of silence, all MLB clubs with active pregame workouts or games at 3 p.m. local time pause to express gratitude and to help younger Americans understand the holiday's significance. That's really cool, man. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so, I mean, I guess the Pirates will be practicing <laughs> and they can do it then. Yeah. Yeah. You'll you'll get some snarky remarks today. I, I I just think it's important. I think it's important to be playing baseball. I think it's important. I mean, for for reasons like that, because everybody going to the game is gonna have that experience as well. And you're and you're gonna have, you know, those type of experiences. I know that like for most of us, a lot of times it's real easy, like, oh, Memorial Day, we've got it off work, we've got it off school, we've got it off this. We can have some people over, whether it's family or friends, or we're going to a family or, or a family members or a friend's house, and we're grilling out, and we're you know maybe by the pool or or maybe you're playing ball. There's a lot of tournaments that happen Memorial Day mm -hmm. weekend that swing all the way into Monday, and that's a lot of fun. You know what I mean? So you've got like all these things that can happen, and it is easy to forget maybe uh, to take that time right and to say like let's remember what this day is about. Let's remember all of those who lost their lives while they were serving our country so that we can do the things that we do so that we can play baseball and you know what I mean? So that we can uh, be a free country and, and whatever else, but it's, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important to have, I, I feel like baseball in its heyday. And I know that like, Hey, we're not in the heyday. I get it. I get it. But when baseball was top dog for a mm -hmm. hundred years, you know what I mean? And through all that time, it was so ingrained in American history mm -hmm. that if you watch the Ken Burns baseball stuff, man, will really tell you. And yeah. if you want to know the history of this country and the things that we went through, look at baseball. Mm -hmm. Because along the way, baseball took part in all of those things. And you can tell the story, at least since baseball's been around, right? You're not going to tell the story right. of the American Revolution <laughs> with baseball. <laughs> but you, you see what I'm right. saying? Like, since baseball's yeah. been around, the, the 20th century especially, like, watch baseball and you get a pulse for what was going on in our country during the 20th century. It was so ingrained in the everyday life, right? And so that's why I always think, for me, I always think of Memorial Day day game being outside and the game on the radio i always yeah. think of it on the radio you know what i mean i don't think of it on tv as much um now there's still baseball there's what 22 teams playing and there's eight yeah. teams not playing and it sucks for eight. those eight teams yeah I was say, it's just eight teams too many yeah exactly it should be everyone Absolutely should be. And, you know, that's the thing that bugs me about it is I just feel, like I said, I feel like if you were MLB and you want to be like, we are, when somebody says, as American as apple pie, <laughs> you want him to say, as American as baseball. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. to, at least for me, it is a, it is such a thing. Is it baseball, baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie? You know what I'm Doesn't saying? Doesn't get much like, more base, more American than that. Right. And so if you want to be ingrained into the culture of America, you're mi then eight cities, I guess, unless one of them's Chicago or New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. But eight cities is are, are essentially void of that this year. Yeah. Last time the Pirates didn't play on Memorial Day, 
excluding 2020 where there were no no games uh was 2008 they didn't play a memorial day um 2020 you had a thing on 2020 as well i mean obviously we had the covid season the, yeah it was the first time there wasn't any baseball games played on memorial day in 140 years wow it's crazy now that's not this year. There are some baseball games, so if you yeah, have the luxury yeah. to be able to pull up a game on the radio and listen to it, or you're listening to people like us, you know what I mean. There's several uh, there's several shows that come out on Monday morning, and so like maybe you're just listening to the radio and you're listening to them talk about it or whatever. You know that's that's maybe getting your fix a little bit, uh, that, so that you can yell at us for maybe some of our bad takes <laughs> or mm-hmm. or whatever, but. Um, yeah, it's really it's really unfortunate for me, uh, in particular. Like I, <laughs> I'll be traveling on Memorial Day. <laughs> we'll be coming <laughs> home, so it's not a huge deal in my life this year, right? But it's it's the principle of the matter. They didn't check with me and say, "Are you going to be doing a party?" Like you know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> if I was going to be doing one, I wouldn't be able to listen to the game, um, and that would stink. But yeah, I don't know, man. Um, do you have any, I don't really know, I mean, I, I have one uh, Memorial Day memory that I'm not going to bring up, but like, do you have any, like, Memorial Day stuff? Do you have anything? Just like memories? Yeah, oh. like anything, memories or anything that you've done. I mean, I get, I was thinking more or less like going to the Pirates game, but is there, I don't care what it is. We're talking Memorial Day, man. Yeah, I mean, usually this year I'm going to have to work, but are you usually... Working? Um, usually it's like, you know, I, I, I get with family and friends and, or, um, and we just have some burgers, dogs. I mean, it's just gathering, you know what I yeah. mean? It's just fellowship. Yeah. For me. Yeah. No specific memories. Just, okay. It's just the day that I'm usually spending time with people. Yeah. Usually have a day off work, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally makes sense. Um, so I'll say in general, um, as far as like specific, I mean, we we said when we're recording this, as far as specific uh, pirates takes, uh, you know, we don't we don't necessarily we don't know what happened on the weekend yet. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, that's not something. As a matter of fact, um, I will record <laughs> Friday's show after this. <laughs> so I'm like <laughs> skipping ahead. And coming back, but anyway, um, but yeah, I just uh, for me it was the biggest thing to be, uh, you know, I, I like baseball I'm a more. I like any kind of get together that gives me a reason to listen to a game on the radio. Because for me, I love, I love, I I would rather watch it right because I want to see all the things. But there's just something so nostalgic about listening to the game on the radio. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Memorial Day is it's, usually one of those for me, days. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, and it just stinks because the the iconic voice of the game, right? No Vin Scully anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's, it, it, that voice just makes me, <laughs> you know, think of Memorial Day and and just the just it, it just engulfs the history of the game. When you hear that voice, and it's just kind of stinks that we're not going to get that. But yeah, day games too. I think in yeah. general, like usually a, a, a holiday like that, you're going to get a day game. Day games do it for me too. I just love day games. It just feels right, you know what I mean. Rather than the than everything else, day games are great. I know that like I have a job where I work from home, and so I have a. Uh, what is it a 50 inch tv right across my room here that i can watch a day game on while i'm working so that's you know not fair but <laughs> even then like i just i really like day games i like going to them i like listening to them i like watching them and there is something different about a day game for me uh, it just feels more like traditional you know back to before they had lights, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Before there was even lights. And so like, there's just a bunch of different things that I feel like make it, make it special. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
And so uh, I'm pretty bummed out that there's no pirate game on Memorial Day, even though I wouldn't be able to watch it anyway. <laughs> uh, instead, it'll be eight hours in a car with three kids. It sounds like a blast, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't I don't know that the game would uh would suit them well. <laughs> I don't know that I'm that, sure they all have their own headphones, they'd be watching their own stuff. Our oldest will. The other two, I'm hoping they sleep. Yeah. So they will have uh I mean, at least Milo will. I don't it's gonna be fun. Yeah. That's you know, there might be some sarcasm involved there, but while you guys are enjoying your hot dogs, think of me. Because <laughs> currently speaking, as in when this is released and when you're listening to it, um, I may be I may be in the thick of it, uh, in the middle of a highway somewhere uh, with no rest area and a kid that's like, I'm going to pee all over this car. <laughs> 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 if you don't stop. <sighs> so, uh, you know, that's fun. So May 27th, if I go back to May 27th of 2013, um, we made a trip, uh, my wife and a friend of ours and I, Josh sometimes listens to the show. We talk, we talk baseball all the time, had a nice conversation with him today about Jose Ramirez and how much of a study is, uh, Josh is a, is a Guardians fan, but, um, Anyway, uh, the three of us decided we're just going to we're going to get in a car and go up to Detroit and we're going to go see the Pirates on Memorial Day. Had the day off kind of a thing. You know what I mean? And so uh, we went up. Uh, I think we went up the night before and got a hotel room and took a PlayStation or something up there. I don't remember. <laughs> Played the show probably. Anyway, uh, went to Detroit for the game. It was, and this is this is just a fun one. Let's just do this exercise because this is 2013, right? So this is a good year for the Pirates. It's a good year for Pirates history. We did lose the game. However, Liriano against Justin Verlander. Liriano hadn't lost yet. You know what I mean? And so we were going into that game high, feeling it, feeling it. I think um, that would have been Monday. So I'm trying to think. There was a big moment in that series where I can't remember who would it 2013. So this would this have been Melanson? Would this have been Hanrahan? Yeah, Hanrahan left before. So this might have been Melanson. Either way, I know that like Watson was there, but this was like a big moment. It might have even been Grilly. This was a big moment, ninth inning. It wasn't this game, ninth inning, and it was like it was like Miggy. Prince Fielder, Victor Martinez, all struck out. It was like a big, like, we're here kind of a type thing. You know what I mean? I mean, the Tigers mm-hmm. were great. I mean, we're talking Verlander the whole nine yards. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Verlander, three runs in seven innings, 13 strikeouts. Liriano gave up four runs in five innings, still held a 235 ERA after that, uh, but suffered his first loss of the season. Mike Zagurski pitched in that game. Jose Contreras, who gave up some extra insurance runs, um, and Tony Watson all pitched in that game. Uh, for Detroit, some of the guys in that lineup, Omar Infante, Torrey Hunter, Maggie Cabrera, Prince Fielder, Victor Martinez, Johnny Peralta, who had a four-for-four four day, I think, and, uh, and a young Avi Sayil Garcia when they were calling him mini Miggy. Because he had the same batting stance, the same body, the same everything, right? Yeah. Um, and the Pirates uh, Pirates lineup, Travis Snyder, Neil Walker, Kutch, Garrett Jones, Russell Martin, Pedro Alvarez, Gabby Sanchez, Brandon Inge playing third base that day against his former team, Clint Barmas, and then Mercer went in for Barmas and Jay Hay went in for... Who did Jay Hay go in for in that game? It might have been, well, it probably was Inge. It was probably, it was probably Brandon Inge. I don't remember though. I think it was a, might have been a pinch run situation, maybe for Pedro or something. I don't remember. Either way, no homers, no homers. Of course, you were playing in Comerica Park back in 2013. Nobody's hitting home right. runs there very often. Um, 
Park so, was huge. Yeah, no homers, but uh, Pirates had, I think, two triples and a buttload of doubles. Uh, more than the Tigers did, but we lost 6-5. Um, it was cold. It was rainy. I looked at the box score. It said 62 and partly cloudy. It was raining. I was in the top. <laughs> we were in the top deck. I remember it raining, um, and I remember the wind blowing, and it was cold. I was cold. 62 doesn't feel right to me. It felt like it was colder than that. Yeah. Maybe at maybe at first pitch, even though it was day game. I I just that's what I remember. Maybe I was wrong. I also it also said forty one thousand in attendance. Now we know that's ticket sales, right? Um, but uh, it didn't. I don't remember there being that. I remember like the section we were in got pretty empty pretty quick, and maybe it was because of the rain. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was a fun trip. It was a fun Memorial Day trip where they weren't too far away. From Central Ohio, we were able to get up there in, uh, I think, three, three and a half hours, something like that. It's it's not much different, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, pretty fun time. That's just the last... I, I don't remember if I was... I didn't look through my deal to see if there was another Memorial Day game that we went to. Yeah. Since, since 2013. There might have been. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get that day off work, maybe it is. How about that Tigers team, though? <laughs> was uh, was Ordonez on that team too? Just not playing that day. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, he did not. Yeah, certainly. I only looked at this box score because it's in my ballpark app, and I just fired up the box score, so I'm not really sure. I know that Jose Valverde was pitching. Um. Oh, there was another name that pitched in that game, too, that was like, yeah, it's like a good bullpen and guy. Scherzer was on that staff, too, probably. I believe he was still there. Yeah, dude, that was a good team. But they were, mm -hmm. uh, the records were, I think we actually were besting them a little bit. I think we were up to 30 wins already, um, and they were at 29 after that game. I think they won their 29th game right then. But, yeah, man, that was... Uh, Obviously, 2013 for the Pirates, that was, you know, a, the big year where we actually got past the wild card game <laughs> and in into a, an actual series. Um, you went to St. Louis for that one, didn't you? I went to, yeah, I went to the uh, game two. I went to the Garrett Cole game in, in St. Louis and then went to two of the games. I didn't get to the wild card game, but we were in St. Louis for, for the Garrett Cole game and then... We were in Pittsburgh for the last two games, games four and game five. Or wait, no, is that right? I was at I was at game three, the first one in Pittsburgh. Right. Well, we were at the same. How did that go? That went one, two, three, four, and then five back in St. Louis. In St. Louis. So I went to game two in St. Louis, and then went to three and four at home. And then they went back to St. Louis. That's right. So Octavia Dotel might have been pitching. Dotel might have pitched in that game. Yeah, that's possible. Who's some of the other names on there? Was Soria there? No. Uh, Benoit. Joaquin Benoit was there. Benoit pitched in that game. It was Benoit and Valverde who pitched in that game in the eighth yeah. and ninth. That starting rotation rotation was disgusting. Fister. Doug Fister, Anibal Sanchez, Scherzer, Porcello. Yeah. Verlander. Yeah. That's nasty. Well, that was a fun trip up there, though. And that was another, you know, example of Memorial Day, even though that wasn't quite the the cookout type day because I was, you know, a little bit chilly and raining. But uh, but it was a lot of fun. And, you know, one of those yeah. things that you think back on. What's that? Donnie Kelly was on that team. Oh, there you go. There Played you go. 12 games. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been right there. That's cool. Well, speaking of the Tigers and the reason that that's like such an easy segue to talk from Memorial Day to going to a game in Detroit is the Pirates are going to be in Detroit this week for two games. Um, too bad one of them couldn't have been on Memorial Day. <laughs> but it is... I Okay, so you could have done a lot of things with the schedule. I get it in this scenario. You've got a day off before a two-game series and a day off after. So had they moved it up, you're going to have two days off? Like, that doesn't fly. You don't want two days off in baseball. Right. But 
Um, you know, I get it. I, I, I don't know why it had to be then. Why wasn't there a four-game series, and then you could have played Monday, Tuesday, and then started one Thursday? That's exactly what uh, some teams are doing. That's exactly what uh, I'm trying to think. That's what the the Tigers are doing. They have Monday off. They're playing two games, and then they start on Thursday. They start a four-game series against the Blue Jays. So, like, what are we doing? I think yeah. that's how that goes. Anyway, so they don't get the day off after. You know, just just we do. So, like, I don't know why. I don't know why they're doing it that way. I, there should be baseball on Memorial Day. But anyway, we are going to play the Tigers this week. And uh, where are we at here? I'm guessing, our, by the way that things are going, we, have, uh, we should have Jones and Skeens lined up for that two-day series. And uh, it's another day game for Skeens. So, like, his first <laughs> night game he's going to pitch is going to be against the Dodgers probably. Yeah. In, at PNC Park in the middle of the week. But anyway. Should be Jones and Skeens, and it should be uh, Scooble against Jones. Scooble just lost his first game of the year, six and one. He was six and zero oh going into that game, and also dealing right two twenty five ERA, mm-hmm. even still, um, absolute stud, one of the Cy Young favorites for a lot of people this year. And then Jack Flaherty is set to go Thursday. I guess it says I wrote Thursday night. It's not a night game. In my notes, I wrote Thursday night. It's just. Oh, he's set to go this. Okay, so he was set to go last Thursday. That's how I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and so it looks like he's going to pitch on Thursday uh, against Skeens just because of the days off and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so Flaherty, a 379 ERA uh, going into the game against the Blue Jays. So they're playing the Blue Jays, and then they're – playing us so i i might have had a little bit backwards there but anyway um he's been about everything they could have expected flaherty uh and you know i've used his name before talking about uh you know the money that he got versus the money that we signed keller to and to show that like hey this is what you paid for but flaherty's been a little better than (laughs) what he has been and so yeah. there's something there too. He's like on the top of the list with like whiff percentage too. So like, you know, the you've got a nice pitching matchup in Detroit coming. Yeah. You really do. And at a a park it's generally a, a pitcher's park, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh even though it's it's changed a bit over the years. At the time of our recording, the Tigers are, Tigers were uh 23 and 26, the same records uh, same record as the Pirates going into last Wednesday. Um, and so they've got a four-game series. That That's it. The four-game series against the Blue Jays that you already know the results of. We don't. And, um, yeah, it's been a similar season for the Tigers, right? I mean, they kind of started off good. And May's been a little bit rough for them. You know yeah. what I mean? They've struggled mm-hmm. a little bit here and there. A little bit different than the Pirates have. Um, I feel like the Pirates were higher than lower than maybe a little higher right now. And maybe the Tigers are a little bit more like the Reds <laughs> where they were like, <laughs> Hey, we're flying high. And then, um, man, the Reds have won like what? Five games in May or something like that. It's been a yeah, rough month scuffling. for them. It's a rough month for them. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, like I said, when we're hitting record, they just got swept by the Royals. They're heading home to face the Blue Jays. So you guys already know that. Uh, military appreciation game on Tuesday. Well, you have to do something because you didn't get Memorial Day. Right. Uh, too bad Skeens ain't pitching that one. Or, <laughs> you know, you would just, the Tigers wouldn't even get a hit. Right. Um, he seems locked in on those days. Tigers have some good players. Riley Green. What, like I said, at the time of recording, nine home runs. Probably hits one over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Kerry Carpenter, Wenzel Perez. These guys, these these names, remember these names? They've, they've been off to a good start. Colt Keith, the rookie from Zanesville, Ohio, had a nice couple games against the Pirates the first go-round uh, in the other two-game series with our natural rivals. <laughs> I don't know. 
We should just like start making something up. Like call it the Leland Cup or something. Yeah. Like why, why is not? that a rival? Oh, well, we didn't have anybody else. Like Philly already had somebody, so we picked them. <laughs> oh, we were we were thinking about Cincinnati, but then we got the Ohio thing going for Cincinnati and Cleveland. So we're gonna skip over them and just pick some team. Yeah, I don't get it. Like what the heck? Yeah. How how does it not become just Philly? Uh, if, it's uh, cross state. Philly's already got one. Who's Philly's? I mean, so obviously you get other than divisional. Like I don't really know. Well, no. Well, that's right because it has to be American National, right? Isn't that how they did that? Because you got the, I, you I got the know. Cubs I've and the White Sox. Heard, I've never even heard that the Tigers are a rival. That's what that two game series is. We'll get them every year, two games and two games as the natural rival. But I think it might have something to do with American and National, which is why it's not the Phillies. I don't I don't know though. I don't think so. I'm trying to think of what some of the other ones are. Obviously, like New York and New York, right? Because they're in the same town. The subway series. And then Chicago, Chicago, LA, LA, or LA Anaheim. I don't play that game. Anaheim, California, Los Angeles County. Not even in Los Angeles County. Completely outside of 45 minutes away from Los Angeles, Los Angeles. It's a big highway, too. Fun to drive on. Um, you got Houston and Texas. Let's see the Houston and Te No, that can't be right. Because they're both American League now. I don't know. It's that whole know, thing. Man. I don't know what they did with that whole thing. Like, it's, yeah. it's silly. It's silly. So I, I know that, like, St. Louis and Kansas City... Right, that makes sense. Milwaukee yeah. and Minnesota, maybe. Something like that. Cincinnati and Cleveland. Um, Tampa and Miami. <laughs> what? I, I'm just I'm lo I'm lost. You like, don't know I mean, this natural rivals no. thing? Uh uh. I've never heard it. Here's a full list of natural rivals. They started this in, I don't know when. It's it's interleague. It's all inter. Yeah, it's interleague. Here we go. Baltimore and Washington. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Cubs, White Sox. We get that. Reds, Guardians. We get that. It's old enough that this list is says Indians instead of Guardians. Royals, <laughs> Cardinals, Angels, Dodgers, Marlins, Rays, Brewers, Twins. I'm nailing this. Mets, Yankees, A's, Giants. I mean, I would have said that one. Guaranteed I would have said that one. <laughs> that Those are the obvious ones. Then it says right. ones that aren't obvious but happen every year. Tigers, Pirates, Padres, Mariners. Yeah, that does feel weird. Like, Padres, Mariners got to feel weirder, weirder than the Tigers, Pirates. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know what I mean? not anywhere close. And ones that, this says ones that will play in every single even year. They'll have six games split home. Red Sox, Braves, Jays, Phillies. So it's an interleague play thing. That's why we can't get Philly because yeah. it's interleague play. And so it's those teams, and then they flip them up. So like Red Sox, Braves, Blue Jays, Phillies, Astros, D-backs, Rangers, Rockies, and then every odd year it's Red Sox, Phillies, Blue Jays, Braves, Astros, Rockies, Rangers, D-backs. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I it's, mean, that's a lot to 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 pull us in with the with the Tigers to make us play them every year. We will get a four game series, two at home, two away, with the Tigers. Like, just put us in the random crap. Yeah, just put us down there in the random crap, and right. we'll play. I mean, like the Red Sox and Braves are lined up. Throw us in that mix. We'll play the Red Sox every, on, in even years, and we'll play the – I guess it has to be an even amount. Well, yeah, well, then it would be the Tigers. We'll play the Tigers and the other ones. I don't know. It's weird anyway. Yeah, it it's weird. weird. They're a natural rival, naturally, okay. because of Jim Natural. Leland, I guess, yeah. and Donnie Kelly. There you go. That's why. 
We're going to make it up. We're going to call it the Leland Cup, even though it's four games. So we could just split every year. We would split so far. <laughs> if we split again, it's like, well, we split. So who gets it? Well, we don't, we don't know still. What yeah. hat's he going to wear in the Hall of Fame? No, I don't think we know. I think it's Tigers. Why? Why is it Tigers? Come on. Anyway. Are you, is, are you, like, are you asking me like what Leland's going to wear? What's Leland going to wear in the Hall of Fame? I mean, they hung a banner up with him with a Tigers hat on. And one of the one of the I saw somebody on Twitter fix it and put him in a <laughs> put him in a Pirates one. And said, "Look, Did he I win fixed a World it. Series there. No, he only won a World Series he only in Florida. Won it in Florida, and he was only there for two years, so he's not going to do that, right? Hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, interesting. That is interesting. Leland Cup. Yeah, I heard it here. Uh, that's actually going to be a really good series, though. That's great pitching matchups. Yeah, it is. Holy cow! You see a lot of strikeouts." Uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to see a lot of strikeouts. <laughs> For sure. For sure. That'll be a fun one. Um, Too bad it's not on Memorial Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this keeps coming back to it, right? Yeah, I mean... I mean, legitimately so, too. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for helping me out there. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> All right, so we've got one more uh one more thing to talk about. And I thought this was important. And you know, obviously with the fact that um, you know, we talk about a lot of this stuff in the off season. If you've if you've listened to us long enough to know uh what some of our off season content is, um obviously we don't just say the same thing every week. Um, you know, we have some topics that we like to talk about. Um, that impact the Pirates, uh, but certainly impact baseball. This one probably uh, probably pretty strongly impacts the Pirates because this is something that could possibly be coming in, I don't know when, right? But it, it could be soon enough, I, I would say. It's a tough one. Yeah. It's, it's tough. It, there's a lot of things they're going to have to... Well, let's before we start talking about it, let's talk about what it is. And it is the TV broadcast rights stuff. And they're... Um, There was an article on the 17th that came out from The Athletic, um, and I remember skimming through it, and then I remember uh, a couple days later kind of coming back to it and saying, okay, this was a long article. Let me actually read down through it. And so, you know, you've heard grumblings here and there with the whole Bally Diamond Sports Group, all that stuff where they're caving, and then obviously the Pirates had their end of it with with AT&T saying, we're done. And the Pirates had to figure out what they were going to do. And it was, are we going to jump in with the Fenway Sports Group and do our own thing? Or are we going to sell the rights to MLB and just allow MLB to control that aspect of things? And I think, I don't want to get ahead of anything because I'm going to say that like we could be wrong about some things. Because I don't think I have a full grasp of anything, right? But I think there was the idea that if it went to MLB at this moment, I'm not sure there would have been a like a channel to watch unless you had what was it? Unless you had like MLB network or something like that, you'd be able to watch like the MLB TV. Well, yeah, you could do MLB TV like streaming, but I think there was the way that MLB did it for they did it for San Diego and one other team. Was it Arizona? I think it was Arizona, San Diego and Arizona. Bally said we're done. And so MLB uh, basically bought those rights. I thought it was Seattle. Either way, might have been. Well, Seattle would have been on. They, they've always been on the same thing we are. So I don't think they were on Bally, but you might be right. It could be Seattle because they were on Root Sports as well. Oh, back right. when we were on yeah. Root Sports and Colorado and Houston. That's and, where I'm, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. With, yeah. So I think it was Padres and Diamondbacks. And what they did was in those markets, like if you were in the Padres market, then you could go to MLB Network alternate and watch all your games. Everything would be broadcast right there. 
you wouldn't have to get MLB TV to watch. You had MLB yeah. Network already. And so I think that's how they handled it. That's how it would have been handled. Now, you would have to make sure that whoever you carry, you have to get the package with MLB Network on it. Right. But I guess how's that? Which is kind of hard to do. Yeah, I mean, like, if you have YouTube TV, MLB they, they took that away. Quite, yeah, MLB TV, or MLB Network is not quite accessible enough, in my opinion. Right. And I think that's something that's certainly they need to work on. But either way, that's how you would watch it on TV, is yeah. you would go to the MLB Network alternate channel. And I think that there can be a couple of those, but either way. Um, and maybe that's how it'll be handled if something like that goes down. Cause it's still happening right now. Obviously the pirates, they've got a little bit of a leeway here. I forget how long they did this. I think it might actually be like three years um, to see how it goes. But the thing about what the pirates are doing now is there is no rights that they're selling for in market rights. They just own it. So there's nobody giving them money every year. Or there's something, right? There has to be something. Yeah, there has to be something. Maybe it is still a certain amount of money. I, it's so funny because we talked about this in the offseason, and I remember there was uh, there was some sort of amount. But I think that they just get, they just get all the revenue now, though. They own it. So yeah. all the ad revenue, like now you have to figure out ad revenue and and make your own money from it, right? Um, either way, what this is boiling down to is MLB is taking a look at, and the article's really great, right? It talks about this day back in the sixties or something like this, where somebody confronted, uh, what's his name? The, the commissioner, the commissioner Frick or whatever. Frick. Yeah. yeah. Somebody went and, and, and said, Hey, you need to nationalize this baseball deal, the NFL's talking about doing it. I think we should be doing it too. And it became a, we're not in position to do that right now financially, but we will talk about this sometime in the future is what he said. Mm -hmm. And apparently <laughs> this is sometime in the future. <laughs> we're there, right? And it yeah. felt like we would never be there because of the way that the regional sports stuff kind of took over. Yeah. Um uh too long didn't read did or didn't listen, you know what I mean? If, however you want to say that. Uh this could mean f significant financial changes in the game. That's what we're getting to. Significant yeah. financial changes. I I'm trying to really like not bury the lead here, right? I'm trying to say, let's make sure that we talk about all these things right out front and then we can explain our stance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where are you on the chances of within 10 years, there being a salary cap in major league baseball, a full on salary cap? You know, honestly, I don't put much thought into that aspect. I just, I just never have. I, I, a, a lot of our listeners are. So I don't even day. really have. I really, yeah, I, I don't really have much of a stance on it. Okay. I'll be honest. Okay, I've been all over the place on it, and and some of the people that, um, that we that we talk to all the time, uh, I've had a lot of discussions with them, because coming into everything, I was just like, no, I don't want it. I think that the owners have a lot of money and the players should have a lot of money. We go to the game, not because it's like, Oh, I'm going to the game. Cause I love what Ben Sherrington's building. I'm not, that's terrible. Uh, what Bob nutting is building. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> ben Sherrington, <laughs> like how is he making more money than the guys on the field? That's the people I'm going to watch. They should be the ones getting the money. You know what I mean? And so the changes yeah. that MLB's making recently, and I don't, I'm not saying that I'm a proponent of $700 million contracts. <laughs> but what I am saying, because like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. that creates more of a gap. But what I'm saying is like the bottom end players should be making more. And they are now. And they've made mm -hmm. some changes that way. 
I believe that, you know, what they've done in the minor leagues is great. Have you seen that number? I know this isn't specifically uh, uh, TV deal stuff, but I thought this was really interesting not too long ago. And I was like, boy, that's worth bringing up at some point if my images would load here. I thought this was really interesting. Um, if you look at the difference between, you know, the, obviously they're trying to make changes in the minor leagues. There's been a lot of teams that are getting like uh, really stuck in like hotel rooms with six guys and you know what I mean? Like crazy things going on in the minors and they're, they're yeah. trying to make a change in that. Check this out, man. The, um, you know, there's been some people that have asked me in the past, like, Oh yeah, but he's in triple a baseball. Like, what do you think he's making? You know what I mean? There's a guy that from our town that was in double a and they were like, yeah, but I mean, he's in double a baseball. I'm like, bro, that's nothing <laughs> like double a baseball. Don't even make 10 grand a year. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's, you know, that's, that's rough in it. Right. I, I, to me, when I look at numbers like that and I'm like, uh, you know, obviously if you're a high draft pick, you get this big signing bonus, but if you're not and you don't have that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like th this is, this is wild to me that you're mm -hmm. grinding. Like MLB debuts mean something to me because I, I've seen these numbers. This is just 2019, Jake. I'm not going way back in time. 2019, the, the salary for rookie level baseball player, and you only get paid during the season. So this is during the season. You're going to get $3,480. This is not, Jeez. this is not a weekly. They do get paid weekly. So whatever yeah. your level at, whatever level you're in, you get paid that week based on this yearly salary. They've got it broken down into how many weeks and it's this much a week, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, it is a weekly pay, but what they do is they say, well, that season's this long, so this is how much you make, right? Yeah. And this is an annual salary, minimum, minimum annual salary, minimum, right? There are guys that make more than this, so this is the this is the bottom. Um, low A is 6,380 a year. For a season. For a season. Same thing for high A, 6,380 a season. That's, that's your first year in... In, in high A. Your second year, it's probably 7,000. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't go up drastically, but the more you're there, every year you get a little bit of, a, of an increase there. Double A, 7,700. Double A baseball in 2019. Your first year in double A, you're going to make $7,700. And triple A, $11,044. $11,000. 2019, 11,000 bucks to be a triple A baseball player. Now, this is a triple-A baseball player, your first year there. This is minimum salary. First year there, not on the 40-man roster. As soon as you get added to the 40-man roster and you're in the minor leagues, 60000 a year. Right? You're on the 40-man roster. You're on the re you're on the major league reserve list, I believe. And Ethan Houlihan's going to listen to this saying, he's, he's thinking, he's listening to every number I'm saying. He's like, well, nah. <laughs> not anymore. And it might be different now. That 60000 it might be different now, right? Um, yeah. But that's what I... That was the last number I've heard uh, was 60000 as soon as you're on the 40-man roster. You're on that reserve list. You're getting more than your, than your typical AAA or AA player because there's double A's on, you know, on that list too. Right. So listen how this has changed in 2024. Rookie level went from $3,480 to $19,800. Hey, let's go. Yeah, that's... Low A from sixty three eighty to twenty six thousand two hundred, that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. High A twenty seven three hundred. You go to double A from seven thousand seven hundred in just twenty nineteen. Thirty thousand two hundred fifty. And in triple A from this is base mine like this is the bottom right, uh, eleven thousand forty four for triple A. In 2019, in 2024, it is 35,800. So you're in double A or, or, or triple A, you're making 30K, 35K. Yeah. And that's base layer. That's base level, right? The, every year it goes a little bit up from there. 40 man, you're jumping all the way up. I don't know what it is now. The last number I heard was around 60,000 a year. As soon as you're added to the major league roster, for the days you're there, you're making your seven, what is it? What is it now? Seven. 
is it 710 is the minimum 750 uh, is the minimum somewhere around there 720 yeah. somewhere in that range on it was 700 last year in the whatever and then it, it bumps up a little bit um so that's what you get for that week when you're sent down it goes back to that 60,000 of of whatever that weekly is and and then whenever you become 6 years in the minor leagues and you become a minor league free agent you can negotiate your own contract and then it, none of this matters um you know you can negotiate but yeah. But they're doing really good things in the minor leagues as far as that kind of thing. I mean, part of that was getting rid of some teams, right? But, um, you know, in, in a nutshell, I don't know why I went there, but I thought that was really interesting. And so yeah. to, to bring up that sort of thing, um, I think is important. When MLB gets the rights of all of, of, all of like the, the in-market, they already have out-of-market, right? Mm -hmm. And there's already shared revenue based on out of market, whatever, boom. This would now be centralizing all of those deals for all of those. I mean, essentially that's what is right because you would, I would highly doubt that if they did that, that they would say straight up like, okay, well, it's MLB network is how you're going to watch the games. I don't think that would be the the fix. I think the fix would be we're still going to work with these companies to show these games, whether it's, I, I mean, finding a way to get a channel on so that people could watch it, right? I think right. the idea is, and one of the quotes in there um, was like, we need to be available for the fan. I want to get that quote. Um, I want to pull that up. It was like right at the end. Consumers need to have the ability to access our product, our games, whenever they want, wherever they want, quickly. We can't make it difficult. And these are the types of things that they're trying to do and they're trying to say, I don't know what it looks like. We can speculate. You know, what does it look like? The Dodgers contract goes through, I think it said 2038. Yeah. So, like, there's something that's going to have to be worked out there. Obviously, the Dodgers don't want to lose that revenue that it's not the revenue from it. Right. Like, it's not like it's um yes network or what the pirates are doing right now, where there's actual revenue coming in from the channel and from the viewership. It is, it is selling the broadcast rights. Right. Um, and so like actually yes network is an interesting thing because I even say, I, there is still a way that that works, right? There's still a way that that's organized. There's still a broadcast rights that even though it's owned by them, um, super confusing. And I know all of, all of you guys are confused too, but the <laughs> Yankees made around 143 million in rights fee in 2022. And they, they referenced that the Rockies got like 57 million. So, you know, who doesn't want to do this? Right. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of teams who do want to do this. And I'm sure that Bob Nutting is probably on that list. He would love for this to happen because now all the teams put all their money into one bucket and then it gets spread out. I don't yeah. know how that pop was loud for people or not loud. That was silly. <laughs> anyway. And then I guess MLB then does the negotiating with, DirecTV and YouTube TV and Fubo and Hulu and whoever else you you get your Time Warner or Comcast, whoever you get your cable through or whether it's streaming or or through the wire or over a satellite or whatever it is, maybe MLB does that negotiating and then they can make whatever they want. But yeah. essentially all that money that comes in for all of that stuff then, you know, somehow gets distributed. Now, does Yes Network still have the ability to make their own money and put it into the Yankees? Yeah, probably. You know what I mean? They should. Some mm -hmm. way. If they're going to put in some kind of work and some kind of... Maybe that, that's how they work with MLB to say, no, we're going to show this through our channel and then they, we're going to get all the ad revenue from this because there's going to be more people tuning into it, but it also makes it available streaming. And so like, if they stream my games more than your games, do I get more money than you? You know what I mean? Right. Like there's all that yeah. kind of stuff that they have to that they have to work out from there. But it's super interesting because it could mean if the revenue is centralized, then it means more for everyone. 
Yeah. And what it does is it kind of closes that gap a little bit between the 143 and the 57. You know what I'm saying? And so if it's not a salary cap, which, by the way, the answer to the question is in the next 10 years, absolutely not. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get a salary cap and a floor in baseball in the next 10 years. That's the answer to the question. It's not going to happen. Nobody's going to agree to it. I don't think there's anybody who really wants it except for small market owners. Outside of them, nobody wants it. The players don't want it. The big teams don't want it. Like most of the people in the game are like, why would we do that? Right? Yeah. And and the answer of why you would do that, by the way, is for the future. <laughs> it's better for the for the brand. It's better for the you know Yeah. The, the competition. The, yeah, competitive competitive balance. For a hundred percent competitive balance, the future of the game, all of those things. It's better for those things. It's just not better for the player to make money. It's not better for right. the owners to make money. Uh, for the ones who make a lot of money, they're going to make right. less money. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And that becomes the issue. What they need is a way to get all of those big player contracts coming from the same pot. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's where it starts to say, well, now we can play with that money too. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's a big thing. And I think there's still going to be more money in bigger markets than there will be in small, but that gap is going to close and get closer and closer and closer together where our payroll doesn't have to be like almost 200 million less than another team in the same league as us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And let's all, let's all say just because of, why we have to do this condition all the time. We could be less than that big gap anyway. <laughs> we don't have to be this poor. Right, we could spend yeah. more money. There's money to be spent. We understand that. We're not yeah. making excuses here. But even if they did, even if the Pirates went to a place where we, you and I believe they could go to, mm-hmm. over $100 million, we know they're not going to play in the 150 range for more than a a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? Even realistically, even what we think, like, dude, stop buying a first baseman for 3.2 million when you know he's not, like, when it's like a, we think he can figure it out. Dude, why can't we just go sign somebody who already has it figured out? Yeah. Yep. Because we have that kind of money to do it. I would have rather have seen 3.2 go to a reliever and 10 and a half go to a first baseman. (laughs) But anyway. Shoot, I'd rather see ten and a half go to a first baseman and a patch on our shoulder. Unbelievable that the Pirates are one of the last teams to adopt a patch on the shoulder. <laughs> I watch some of these teams and I'm like, wow, that's janky. And I'm like, yeah, but they're getting money from that. Like we right. we can't, you know what I mean? Is it the fact that we can't actually convince a team or a brand to actually say like we're worth it? Is that what it is? <laughs> I hope not. I hope not too. But why are we one of the last ones on that list? Right. Anyway, guys, this is something worth following. And if something like this happens, it could be, it could be, it could have as big of an effect as a salary cap and a floor. And because everyone will know what you're spending. Yeah. And they're going to say, Mr. Nutting, you're not spending your share of the money. So without a real floor, right? Right. There will still be somewhat of a floor because somebody who doesn't spend the money that's given to them, which is is in place now. If you don't spend the money that you're getting in shared revenue, you will get called out for that. You have to show where you spent that money. Yeah. You just, all your other money, you don't have to show. So they can only spend that money and get away with it. Somehow, obviously, I think there has to be some sort of rule. Like if we give you, if we give you $50 million, then you have to at least match that. You have to spend that and match that something like that, where they would be able to say like, well, now you have to spend a hundred million dollars because we've just told you that if you're going to spend our money, you should also be able to spend as much as that or some sort of percentage of that with the money that you're making on your regular stuff. Right. Right. Um, 
however this works. And I know that these are these are sort of pipe dream ideas that I'm kind of throwing out there. But the truth of the matter is that this will um, centralizing that revenue will make a huge difference. I mean, that's the NFL. The NFL makes money. It gets sp- spread out to the teams, and then they basically all work from the same pot. Baseball won't be there, right? They won't be all the way right. there because there will still be some sort of difference in local revenue based on like how many eyes are actually tuning in. Um, and so there will there will somehow be some sort of split, but I don't think it'll be as great as the split is now because I think baseball has it in their best interest to... Uh, to find a way to continue to push for competitive balance, not just, well, the different teams won the World Series every year for the past X amount of years, and no other sport can say that. Because that is true, but mm-hmm. it still doesn't eliminate the fact that it is the same teams. Like, you're fighting for two spots in the playoffs every year. Yeah. Because you already know the Yankees and the Braves and the, or the Yank, excuse me, the Dodgers and the Braves and the uh, Cubs. Really, Cubs should be. That's that's <laughs> the team everybody should be mad at, a big market team who doesn't yeah. spend like a big market team. Um, what are my – Phillies. Yeah, Phillies, Mets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, these are the I guys mean, who have the go. capability to be there every year, yeah. year in and year out. Yeah, and you go recent. I mean, Houston and Tampa Bay – well, but Tampa Bay is working with the same money we are. I- I'm talking about the the ones who have the 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 financial oh, ability to be in the mix every there. year. Tampa Bay is playing for one of those spots too. You know what I'm saying? But like the teams like in the National League specifically, like the Dodgers, the Mets, the Phillies, the Cubs, the Cardinals, and that's even Braves. that's even the Braves and the um, and the Giants. Those are the teams that are like, you have the financial ability to be in the mix every single year. I'm not even putting the Padres in there, even though what they're doing. But that doesn't mean that they're, I mean, like, I don't, I'm not even sure how they're doing it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And uh, they're, they're causing a problem is what they're doing for themselves. They've already admitted that they've already tried to, to blow it up as much as they could. But, um, you know, it's, it's essentially the, the Mets are like the team that's allowing somebody to take their spot. Right. You know, but they've got the ability financially to be in the mix every year and to get all the players via free agency. Whatever happens on paper is is what I'm talking about, right? Anybody right. can go out and win during the season. Baseball's meant to be played on the field, not on the pocketbook. And it will always be that way. I don't care how much money you spend, whoever has the most talent. And the way baseball works is sometimes some of that great talent is making league minimum. So yeah. You know, if you if you draft and develop well, you're going to be in the mix and trade well as well. It's important. Hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, but anyway, this was an interesting show. I mean, obviously, we're not talking about the current games that are going on, you know what I mean, um, because of the scenario. But, hey, uh, I'm allowed a, a, a vacation as well, and um, we just didn't have the – we don't have the ability to put this on with me on the road. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Jake doesn't have this, uh, the setup in the, in the whole nine yards to, to do it. So this is what we're doing. This is fun. I'm glad that, um, if you're listening to us on Memorial day, thanks for letting us be part of your day. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're listening throughout the, uh, the next days after that, uh, thanks. And, Go back and listen to Fridays. It'll be a shorter show. Uh, if, you, if you missed it, uh, I'm going to talk about, or I, I talked about, uh, you know, the Paul <laughs> Skeens outing uh, in, in the rubber match against the Giants. And you know what I mean? So don't forget to catch that. Go back and listen to Fridays. Um, any of them that you missed, get caught up on it. Played on three times speed or something like that. Uh, my wife likes to listen Make to us sound on like chipmunks. Yeah, my wife likes to listen to it on uh, like half speed, and then tell everybody this is what this is what it would sound like if he was just totally blind drunk. And I'm like, come on, man, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
but that's no, hilarious. yeah, this this was a good one. Um, we'll be back with another one after the Tiger series and before the one after that. Yeah. So <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Uh, enjoy your Memorial Day if you are listening to this on Memorial Day. Don't forget to take a moment uh, to think about those uh, who gave their life for our freedom. Yep. Absolutely. Let's go, Bucks. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks.